In the fall of 1980, a dangerous grizzly bear was rampant in Glacier National Park. He had already chased three hikers into a tree and was rummaging through their backpacks for food. Then he spotted one camper who was defending himself with the fabric of his tent. Lawrence Gordon, 33, found himself at the mercy of a predatory bear. Northwest Montana's Glacier National Park is a pristine ecosystem with more than a million acres of mountainous terrain, more than 130 lakes, more than 1,000 plant species, and hundreds of animal species. The park was established in 1910 and has provided excellent recreational opportunities for millions of people ever since. The diversity of wildlife allows park visitors to see animals such as moose, mountain lion, mountain goat, gray wolf, wolverine, Canada lynx, black bear, and grizzly bear, as well as large predators in the park's forests and open meadows, and the huge number of people who visit the park each year. This diversity allows park visitors to see the animals. Conflicts with wildlife have occurred, but an unprecedented number of conflicts occurred in 1980. In Glacier National Park, a bear killed three people in three months. After Grizzly Night, when two women were killed on the same night, managers made changes. Despite these changes, however, more tragedies lay ahead. In 1980, three grizzly deaths following one after another became a cause for concern. The first victims of the hunt and attack were 22-year-olds Jane Ammerman and Kim Beverly, who were camping on a sandbar on Divide Creek. At 4 a.m. July 24th, a grizzly ripped open their tent and killed them both, and a few weeks later, Glenn Flake. Three hikers were rescued in Petrie when they were aggressively pursued by a grizzly bear. They threw their backpacks to the ground and watched down from branches as the bears tore apart their tents and devoured the snacks inside. They were lucky to get out of the way in time. But even though the rangers reported the incident, the bear did nothing. It was only a matter of time before someone else was killed in the park. By tragic coincidence, that person turned out to be 33-year-old Lawrence Gordon. He visited Glacier National Park in late September 1980. He had been issued a backcountry camping permit that allowed him to camp in the park from September 26 to 29. He planned to leave the park and return home on September 30th, but unfortunately, this did not happen. Solitary hikers in the area were in real danger. More often than not, when a bear hears or sees a person approaching, they turn the other way. However, sometimes they do the opposite. They actively hunt because they are used to people buying food for them, or because they have found it difficult to catch their former prey. Such bears are considered extremely dangerous. Lawrence camped in rugged terrain in the northeast corner of Glacier National Park, about 10 miles from the Canadian border. He pitched his tent near the shores of Lake Elizabeth, surrounded by mountains reflected in the mirror-like surface of the lake. The lake was an incredibly scenic place to camp. However, no one knows exactly what happened to Lawrence. However, evidence found at the scene and accounts of other bear attacks suggest the following conclusions Lawrence lived in Lake Elizabeth, which allowed him to walk some of the surrounding trails on a daily basis. However, his presence did not go unnoticed on the shoreline. A large grizzly bear spotted Lawrence's tent and smelled the food he was cooking on the shoreline. Lawrence was camping at the time. He had no idea that the grizzly bear was investigating his camp. In the evening, he returned. He cooked a meal while looking at the lake and the starry sky. When the fire was extinguished, he put down his belongings and settled in for the night. Lawrence fell asleep in his sleeping bag, but he was not alone. The bear had returned. The bear smelled food again. Unaware of the grizzly's approach, Lawrence was sound asleep when the bear let out a low growl. Lord opened his eyes and sat up abruptly. Yes, it was him. From outside the tent on the other side of the canvas, a few inches from his face, he had indeed heard it. He held his breath. The deep growling and loud snorting was heard again. The bear was sniffing around the tent. It was the remains of the dinner that Lawrence had eaten hours ago. Suddenly, the bear struck the side of the tent with its long, sharp claws, making a gaping hole in it. Lawrence found himself face to face with the huge bear. When he poked his head inside the tent, he felt the bear's breath and immediately attacked it. Lawrence instinctively fought back, but found himself trapped in his sleeping bag. Unable to free himself, he could only punch and kick the bear in the face over and over again. The attacks were swift and ferocious, 
The force of the bear's claws digging into his flesh was immense, and the bear felt them almost crushing him. The bear roared and tore the young hiker apart. The damage was extensive, and within minutes, Lawrence died of his wounds. Lawrence died a lonely death, and sadly, his body was not found until days later. A bear had dragged Lawrence out of his tent and dragged him to a nearby coniferous tree. There, the bear mauled Lawrence's body, as it always does with its prey. A few days later in October, Lockwood, the park's chief naturalist, reported that Lawrence's body was badly mutilated and that parts of it had apparently been eaten by the bear. Rangers immediately began searching for the bear. A day later, six miles from where Lawrence was found, rangers shot and killed a large female grizzly bear. She weighed 379 pounds, or 170 kilograms. It was unclear at the time whether she was the female bear responsible for Lawrence's death. She had a tag on her left ear indicating that she had previously been considered a nuisance bear and had been relocated from the area where Swift now lives. Two years earlier, in 1978, it matched the description given by hikers who had escaped up a tree a few weeks earlier. Experts planned to examine droppings and tracks left at the Lawrence campground to determine if the female brown bear shot was the same one. She was sent for an autopsy to a lab at Montana State University in Bozeman. Her teeth and claws were also analyzed there to see if they matched the marks on Lawrence's body. They found that a tooth bark left on one of Lawrence's books was a perfect match to a grizzly tooth. Lawrence became the third person to be attacked and killed by a bear in just three months, but only the sixth in the park's 71-year history. Oh, in the wake of these deaths, park management has made changes to protect visitors. These include prohibiting solo travel in bear-infested areas during certain times of the year. This is because bears are much less likely to attack people in groups than alone. Park staff sometimes proved too lenient in dealing with problem bears. Rangers often waited for a bear to show aggression before intervening. Sometimes they moved bears that were behaving inappropriately, oh such as the bear that killed a lawyer, rather than disposing of them. Protecting both people and wildlife proved difficult.